Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. Under Pastor Hires, if you love Pastor Hires. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And we're so honored to be with you. I was going to mention that if he didn't, that Janae and I prayed Bianca through several years ago. And, and uh, we uh, are very close to Marcus. And he's doing great things for the kingdom of God. And you're, you should be very proud of, of who you are and who you're sending out. The kingdom is being impacted by the land. And we give you honor. So glad to have my sweetheart here with me and my boys and my baby girl. And Brother Heyer said that... Uh, <clears throat> Pastor Heyer said that she'd make a great preacher's wife, but the problem is she's never allowed to date. So, so I don't know how that's going to happen. <laughs> don't send your little boy over to say hi tonight. <laughs> it's amazing how different you feel with a boy versus a girl. It's, whoa, whoa. Anyway, but we're so glad tonight. I feel direction here. Genesis 1, 14. Ecclesiastes 3, 1, Galatians 6, 9. Pastor Hires confirmed what I was feeling in the switching. I felt something else to preach. Maybe I'll come back and preach it, but he confirmed something. Genesis 1, 14, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1, Galatians 6, verse 9. Amen. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs, or in the Hebrew that is signals, and for seasons. Someone say seasons. And for days and for years. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we're going to read verse number 1. And that verse says, to everything there is a season. Somebody say a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. And then the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If we faint not, right there in the Greek means if we do not get exhausted, we shall reap. And I want to release what I'm feeling right now, and that is signals of your upcoming season. Signals of your upcoming season. Lord Jesus, I take authority over the spirit world right now. I worship you, and I bind everything that hell has sent tonight. And I thank you for the moving of the Holy Ghost, and I praise you. And I love you for what you're about to do tonight. Have your way. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? You know, just as a commercial, just as a commercial, you stay standing for a second. We, we, when we clap our hands, we kind of just do it out of obedience because we think it's some kind of human worship. Oh, clapping your hands is not human worship. It's angelic. Read Ezekiel 3. When Ezekiel heard the noise of the living we the creatures or the angels touching their wings together or in the Hebrew clapping their wings that's where we get clapping our hands it's not human worship it's heavenly worship so when David said oh clap your hands all you people what he's saying is you can this is what angels do when they go before the throne that's what the angels do oh clap your hands all you people and shout unto God with a voice of triumph Hallelujah. 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 And you may be seated. Seasons. Moed in the Hebrew. Appointed place. Appointed time. Meeting. When God made seasons, it literally in the, in the Hebrew is, it means divine appointments. Divine appointments. There is something with your name attached to it that is appointed by God in your life. To everything there is a season or a divine 
appointment. Some people this morning had a divine appointment. They did not just receive the Holy Ghost because they accidentally strolled in here. From the beginning of their life, God knew that July 1st, 2018, they would have a divine appointment with destiny as he filled them with his spirit. Nothing is accidental in the kingdom of God. There's no such thing as chance or fate or luck. For my Bible said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He knows every conversation you're going to have tomorrow, right now. Every detail of your life is planned out by God. And you have a season attached to you where everything comes together. All things work for good. Every good thing and every bad thing in your life is actually working together for your benefit if you're called according to his purpose. And so when you understand that the word said you shall reap in due season if you faint not the word do there is idios or it means a personal season you shall reap in your personal season if you faint not in other words just like spring and summer and fall and winter there's a season with your name attached to it in the heavenlies where everything manifests that's now just a dream where everything comes together, everything makes sense, everything you felt five years ago all of a sudden comes to your life. It's not something that God's making you wait on. It's just that your season has not approached yet. But when your season comes to you, everything around you will connect, and you'll understand all of that that I went through was for this. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bringeth forth his fruit in his season. The tree had his own season. And you have something coming. And what happened this morning was a signal of what's about to take place in this church. It wasn't something... Here's what I feel to tell you. It wasn't an annual breakthrough where a big outpouring happens and nothing happens till next July. This was a signal of what God is planning to do every week. He wants people to receive the Holy Ghost in this building. Every week, he wants people in that tank being baptized in his name. It's a signal of the season. <laughs> One of the biggest spirits tormenting spirits that's on the loose is the lying spirit that tells people you've missed your season you're past your season you've already peaked you've seen the greatest god's gonna do in your life you've already gone to and, and the devil will have all kind of voices to tell you why you've passed that season maybe you fail maybe you weren't as consecrated as you should have been maybe you didn't take it as serious as you should have and so because of that you're now living below where you used to live in the, in your walk with god and hell shows up every time a child of god is living below where they used to live to tell them you have already passed your season go with me to the dungeon where joseph is sitting there after 11 years he's been in the he's been in pits he's been in potiphar's and now he's at the dungeon beneath the in the prison beneath the palace and as he's there they bring in two employees of the palace the butler and the baker and joseph's gift is still working even though he's in the prison and the, he's sitting there and they they talk to him about their dreams and he interprets them and hell was telling joseph this is as high as you'll ever get you will work for employees of the palace you will minister to people that work in the palace but you will never be what the dream said you would be you will never have what the dream said you would have you will never possess what the dream said you would possess it's been 11 years joe you've been waiting a long time you're a fool some people would roll their eyes at some of you in this room for holding on to what you've been holding on to it's been years since god gave you the promise and hell has tried everything to rock your house rock your marriage rock 
your kids, rock your mind to convince you that you've missed out. I feel the Holy Ghost up here, that you missed out on your season. I've come to expose that lying spirit right now. You have not missed out on your season. What you thought was your season was a signal. I said what you thought was your greatest moment was just a signal of what God has planned to do in your life. You need to look back down memory lane and say that was a sign of where I'm headed. Shepherds were abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the angel said to them, Fear not. And he starts describing all these things. And he said, You're going you're gonna to find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. But before he said, You're going to find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, he said, This shall be a sign unto you. You would think that their season was meeting baby Jesus. Just saying. You would think that the shepherd's greatest moment was seeing the birth of the king, the baby boy laying in the manger. But the angel said, it's not your season, it's your sign. And the Bible said that when they left that manger, everybody wondered at the words of the shepherd. Their season was when they saw the angel, when they had the angel encounter and they went to see Jesus. That was just a sign. But their season was that sign gave them a platform to release their voice to everybody around the country. And their season was everyone wanted to hear what they had to say from their encounter. Oh, if you're looking for a platform but have never had the encounter, you will miss out on your season. But if you keep having Shatalahaya, the encounter with God day by day, the encounter will connect you to your season where everyone wants. Some of you this is going right over your head like you have no idea what I'm talking about right now. Is there anybody spiritual in here that knows I've been praying and I've been wasting my time on the floor? Hell's been screaming at me. But God said the encounter will lead to my season season <laughs> oh what you call a past victory was just a signal of where you're headed <laughs> Oh, why do you think you can defeat Goliath David I've had some signals you're just a boy, yeah, but I'm a boy who's had some signs. You're just a kid, but I'm a kid that's seen some stuff when no one was around. I was there in a field when you weren't there, and a lion came to kill my sheep, and I killed him dead with my hands. I killed a bear with my bare hands, and you're going to tell me I can't have Goliath. But even when I killed Goliath, when David cut his head off and killed that giant, that wasn't his greatest victory. That was a signal. He was about to be the king of Israel. He was a anointed to be king and that giant said you'll never do anything you're gonna die right here but David had a season approaching and so the victory over Goliath was not a huge moment it was a signal that David was about to reign you've got to understand when God answers a prayer when God comes through for you this week it's not so to get over five seconds later it's a signal of something he's planning to do that's why you always got to walk in Thanksgiving because if you remember what he shot you what he did yesterday You'll have confidence in what he can do tomorrow. I understand that what you did before is connecting me to what I expect you to do now. It's a signal of your season that's approaching Goliath. Looked at him and said, you don't understand. I've got everything. I'm going to kill your dog. I'm going to kill you dead, bud. You're, you have no chance. I love what David replied to the enemy. He said, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield. I come to you in. He said, your protection is with you. My protection is on me. Oh, damn. In other words, if you walk in the world, you've got to have someone helping you all the time to get your victories. But David said, I don't need anybody or any armor. I've got a season coming, and my protector is all around me right now. You have to die. There's no chance you can win this war. I've got my season approaching. There is a season coming to this church. This morning was a signal as I prayed for several people. I began to realize I come against the drug culture of this area. And as I prayed, 
I felt it in the Holy Ghost today that God is about to start breaking the backs of the drug spirits in this area. I don't even know who I'm talking to right now, but there's some things, loved ones you think are never going to come because they're bound by drugs. But this morning was a signal to you that the season of the drug culture being in control of this area is coming down. I feel I also tell you in the Holy Ghost that the witches in this area cannot curse this church enough. There's nothing they can do. They've said everything they can say, but the Lord has reversed everything they attacked with. I plead the blood over every one of you right now. Your season of favor is coming. Your season of power is coming. Your season where God manifests his glory. Somebody clap your hands like the angels too and praise the name. I don't know if I told you here before. I don't remember how, how long it's been since I was here. But about four years ago, when my little boy was seven months old, my first child, and we were in Stockton, California, and we were getting on the elevator on a Saturday night at the Hampton Inn to go out to eat, and we were coming down the elevator, and this lady stepped on the elevator after us, had a glass of beer in her hand, headed down to the pool, about 50 years old. I thought nothing about it. And then she looks at my little boy, and she says, how old's your boy? And I said, he's seven months old. She said, when was he born? I said, December 9th. She said, oh, he's a Sagittarius. Now, you understand, I had preached like 87 times that week, so I had no idea. I was so tired. I was like, but my wife said, wait a second, That's, we don't do signs. We don't do that kind of stuff. When my wife said that, I had no idea this lady was a witch sent by hell to us on the elevator. The lady lunged at my baby and began in demonic tongues, cursing my little seven-month-old baby. I mean, lunging at him with the most evil tongues, cursing him. As we walked out the lobby, she cursed us from behind. As we walked to our car, she cursed us and screamed at us, held her hands up like she was praying against us as we drove out of the parking lot. All night long the baby screamed in torment but the next morning 72 people were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and I knew it was a signal. That attack you're under, that's not God forsaking you. That's hell worried that your season is approaching and they're attacking because they're afraid of what you're about to have. It's a signal. It's a signal. Someone needs to get your antenna spirit and realize it's not crazy what you're going through. It's a signal what you're going through. I remember my 33rd birthday two and a half years ago, two days before, someone prayed a powerful prayer over me. But all that week before that birthday, I was attacked viciously by a certain preacher. He hates me and came after me across the nation trying to destroy me. And I don't know why he was coming, but he was. And on that night, two nights before my birthday, another man of God laid hands on me and said, you're about to see the dead raised. You're going to have resurrection anointing. And there I am being attacked left and right. I had no idea what was going on. But two days later, on Sunday morning when that young man 17 years old Damien walked to the altar in Sacramento and started throwing up blood and before long he fell over dead and was dead eight minutes and we could not find a pulse when I reached town and touched his chest and I said one word I said one name and that name's above every name it's above death and when I spoke the name of Jesus God raised him from the dead then I realized what I just went through was a signal of what I now possess Someone needs to praise God for the attack right now. Thank God for the hell you went through. It's a signal that you've got authority in the season that you're stepping into.
So two months ago, when my, when my little girl was one month old, and I go, I was vacuuming out the car. We had a 16-hour drive the next day for where we were going to preach. And I go upstairs and lay down. She's laying in a little, little bassinet. And I lay down, and my head hits the pillow. And a voice speaks to me and says, your girl is about to choke. And I sat straight up in the bed. I said, what in the world is that? And my wife walked in the room. And 30 seconds later, my baby started choking out of nowhere. And she turned so blue. I couldn't, I can't tell you how blue she turned. She was just choking. We lost control. We were praying our guts out. Rushed her to the emergency room. God, stop the choking. And for a month, she had these choking spells. They misdiagnosed her several times. You see, and, and when stuff starts going on like that, after all the wars I've been through in the last several years, I start to realize something good must be coming. You would not be attacking me if I was not on your turf. I'm going to say that again. If the devil's leaving you alone, it's because he's not worried about you. But if all hell's breaking loose, you must be further than you think you are in his territory. <laughs> Don't curse God and die. You talk like a foolish woman. Start speaking life to your family. Prophesy a miracle in your house. This attack is because I'm anointed. My anointing demands adversity. What I have is sent by God. Speak that in your spirit. I feel in the Holy Ghost. Some of you that walked in tonight fearing and afraid need to leave prophesying and declaring that my season is approaching. I've survived what hell said I would not survive. I've come through what they said I would not come through. And because I survived, I declare, give me my stuff back. Give me my kids back. Give me my anointing back. Give me my future. Give me my destiny. And so two weeks ago, we're in Texas, and we're at the hotel, and the boys are swimming in the little pool there. And the pool's five feet deep on one end and really shallow on the other end. And I went and got them food, and so I brought the dinner back, and they had their little floaties on. And I took their little floaties off and said, sit down at the table here, and we're going to eat dinner. And Janae's grandpa was talking to me, and I turned around, and my three-year-old was at the bottom of the five-foot and so with my clothes on my phone my keys everything didn't think like any parent would I just dove in the water pulled him out of the water got the water out of his mouth he was gargling and I didn't understand and that night we kept him awake because he was real groggy and God saved his life and then last weekend we're at the hotel in Jacksonville Florida getting ready to preach Sunday morning and God wakes me up in the middle of the night and I walk out in the little living room where my little boys are supposed to be sleeping and the oldest one's asleep and the, uh, the middle one the same baby that was in the water he's not there and I said well, Jet where are you buddy where are you and he, he crawls out from underneath the little hide of bed with a butcher knife in his hand that was in the little hotel kitchen we had no idea he could have fallen right on top of that and the Lord woke me up and I just told the devil listen to me you're coming at my wife you're coming at my kids awful hard I have a feeling there's something big coming to our family and so if you're gonna you're gonna attack my kids you're gonna attack my wife just know this sucker I plead the blood over them right now and every time you attack them God has stopped it because there's something coming let me tell you something is coming something is coming you've got to hold on to your faith hold on to your anointing hold on to what God has told you If you didn't think that's bad, you should have been on me with me on my flight four weeks ago, five weeks ago. I was flying from California to Indianapolis on a Sunday night and preached in, in California. Sunday morning, flew to Phoenix, flying to Phoenix to Indianapolis Sunday night. And out of nowhere, our plane was hit by lightning. And the light, the plane went several feet, several thousand feet probably, straight down. I mean, my life flashed before my eyes. I was scared out of my mind. People were screaming, holding on to each other, screaming at the top of their lungs. And all I know was... 
I began to scream the name three times. I said the name of Jesus three times. But by the third time I yelled it, I happened to yell it over the entire voice of everybody on that plane. And when I screamed it the third time, the plane leveled out and everybody stared at me. Let me tell you something. We have dominion shataya, and authority over everything the devil can do to us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Somebody clap. Somebody shout. Somebody lift up your voice. Somebody dance. Somebody glorify him. Somebody love him. Stay standing. I want you to understand. This is not my message, but, but the word said the devil is as the prince. He's the prince of the power of the air. Read that in the Greek. It means the devil dwells between the ground and the stars. When you look up at the sky, between you and the stars is the demonic domain. Okay? That's why you shouldn't roll your eyes when an angel shows up to help you. Or if an angel's in the church service like there's one in here tonight. Because if an angel is in the atmosphere, he's broken through the airspace of hell to get to you. Meaning victory has already taken place. Read Daniel 10. Okay? And so you look up, and if you look up long enough and you listen to the voice of hell long enough, you always feel like they're above you. They're just pushing down on you. But a couple verses later, the Bible says we are to sit in heavenly places, which means above the stars. (laughs) Meaning, if you get in the spirit, you officially have the devil underneath your feet. And when he attacked the plane that night, I expected that because I've had all kinds of attacks on planes the last 16 years. That's his domain. But we have access to a higher level. And when you scream the name of Jesus into hell's atmosphere, it tears the atmosphere or the kingdom of hell apart. And it lets an opening for angels of the Lord to come into you. Can I tell you something? The attack that you've just survived was not accidental. God, let it happen. Do not get mad at God. But thank God. Because now that it's over, it's about to be reaping season in this church. And you have not been exhausted. You have not fainted. I know you're tired. I know you're weary. But the Lord said to tell you, Behold, I have set before thee an open door which no man can shut. For thou hast a little strength. That's what Revelation said. I have set before you an open door which no man can shut. For thou hast a little strength. In other words, the door's about to open. You're see, well, let me, just, let me just get this. Stay standing. I have set before you. In other words, in the past, past tense, in the spirit, I've already put the door there. You're just now about to come to it in the physical. It's not a closed door. You will not have to knock for this answer. I have set before you. <laughs> An open door. (laughs) Some of you have no idea. You think you're nowhere near your open door. But guess what? That's that's fine. You know why? You're probably not. But you're not finding the door. The door's going to find you. It's a moving door. Uh Uh-oh. He said, you think you're nowhere near your season, but I've already set something in front of you that you're about to, whoa, where was that out of nowhere? I'm about to tell you right now, the Holy Ghost, some of you think you're nowhere near the open door, but the open door is in the spirit and you can't see it yet. But if you get in the spirit right now, you will see that God has been waiting the entire time. One last verse. Can you put up for me Luke 1? Verse 45, man, I feel the Holy Ghost and prophetic anointing up here. Luke 1, verse 45. Luke 1, 45. I'll read it to you. I want to give you what the Lord has shown me. Luke 1, 45. Now, this is when Mary walks in 
and she's pregnant, but according to historians, doesn't believe she's pregnant because she hasn't, hasn't swelled yet. There's been no swelling, no inflation. So she's not sure if she's actually got a baby in her. Meanwhile, her cousin, Elizabeth, has a baby who's not moved in six months inside of her. She's swollen with no movement. Mary has not seen any kind of evidence that she's got a baby in her. Watch. Elizabeth said these words. Luke 1, 45. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance. Someone say, there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. There shall be a performance in the Greek means this. There is an event that will verify your promise. In other words, you're on heaven's calendar right now. And there is a date, a certain date, where everything makes sense that you just went through. Some of you are panicking like you don't believe me. And the reason Elizabeth prophesied that to Mary was because the verse before said, when you walked in, my baby who had not moved leaped in me. And when you, I feel like saying it, and when you feel it leaping in you, that's when you've got to open your mouth and prophesy that the season is going to manifest because I feel something in me. You can roll your eyes all you want to, but you don't know what's leaping in me. And because it leaped, I prophesy there shall be a performance. Who's been going through hell in here? (laughs) So Tala Mahaya. Who's been dealing with fear in here? Anxiety, worry, depression, stress. These are all signals uh, (laughs) that hell doesn't like where you're headed. Somebody get in the spirit right now with me and understand that hell is afflicting you because you're anointed. They're worried because you're a worshiper. They want to attack you because you're a threat to them. They fight who they fear. And when somebody on a Sunday night will start lifting up God despite what they're facing, connects them to their signal. Somebody in this building has just got a signal. It's not over. It's just beginning. The revival you've waited for, Pastor Hires, is just beginning. The revival you've preached and prophesied is just beginning. The tears you've cried on that altar floor that no one has seen has not been in vain. The revival is just beginning. I pray and I release it right now in the spirit world. A season of revival be unleashed right now in this church, in family members, on backsliders, on drug addicts, on neighbors, on co-workers, in Jesus' name, somebody shout Jesus! Just nudge your neighbor. Tell them, my season's coming. My season's coming. I thought it was over, but my season's coming. I feel faith in my spirit. My season's coming. Our season's coming. The church's season is coming. The revival is coming. Some of you need to come down to this altar tonight and put the devil in his place. Tell that chirping, chattering snake that I still am walking toward my destiny and you can't take it from me. If you should, if you were going to take it, 
you would have killed me when you had me down, but you couldn't kill me because it wasn't my season. I could hear Jesus telling Herod, go tell that fox, the blind still see, the lame are walking. You can't do anything to me unless I approve it. Can I tell you the devil can't touch you unless God approves it? The Lord is with you. I wish I had more than half of you up here right now. I wish some of you would bust a move on hell and say, I have faith for my future. I've got faith for my kids. I've got faith for my family. I've got faith for my ministry. It's not dead yet. It's not over yet. God, take me to my season. Somebody lift up your voice like a soldier and let hell know where you stand. Lift up your voice like a warrior and show hell, hey, you don't have me. You don't have my kids. My season's coming. My season's coming. My door's opening. I said, my door's opening. I said, my door's opening. I said, your season's coming. I said, favor's coming to this family. Blessings coming to you. Answers are coming to you. The answers are on the way. The answers are on the way. The answers are on the way. This church is stepping into a season of answered prayers corporately and individually. Prayers that have been prayed for years are going to have sudden answers from God. Prayers that hell has told you were never the will of God to be answered are going to be answered by God because God said your season. It's our season. It's our season. It's our season. It's our season. It's your season. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Winter's over. I said, winter's over. It's time for the blossoms to bloom. It's time for the flowers to grow. Let's be springtime. Let there be spring and summer. In the summer heat of Florida, let somebody step into their spring season right now. Someone's about to grow. Someone's about to explode in growth. Explode in revelation. Explode in wisdom. Explode in anointing. Explode in discipline. Explode in the reward. Explode toward God. Hallelujah. 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 I speak life into somebody's destiny right now. I command your destiny to get off CPR right now and breathe in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your dream breathe right now. Come on, stop trying to bury something that God only planted. He caught out of a higher. Let that dream breathe. Let that dream breathe. Let that dream breathe. Hallelujah. Someone needs to grab hell by the throat right now and say, I'm done playing your games. I'm done playing your games. I'm done playing your games. God will see me through this. Your answer is on the way. Your answer's on the way. Your answer's on the way.
Let there be financial breakthroughs in this church. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let there I release divine employment right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be employment in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be interviews and second interviews. I pray you raise people's resumes from beneath the stack to the top of the stack. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you are going to step into your season of favor and step out of your season of suffering. You're going to step out of your suffering and step into your anointing. As the new door opens, let the old door close right now behind you. Let every screaming voice of hell be silenced. For the Lord is on your side. Whom shall you fear? If you knew it in tongues, that's fine. If you knew English, that's fine. But someone needs to open their mouth and start prophesying right now over your future. Start declaring life where you've been afraid that, that nothing would happen. Start declaring it right now. Somebody ignore your neighbor and open your mouth and speak a miracle. For well, the miracle's in your mouth. Come on. Should be louder than that, Deland. Come on to land. Come on to land corporately. Let the church prophesy corporately, individually. If you'll open your mouth, then the church corporately will open its mouth right now. If every individual opens their mouth, that means the church is opening its mouth corporately. My God, I feel them up here. This church needs to open its mouth right now and declare we are coming for revival. We cannot handle the harvest that's incoming in this building. We need more room. The harvest is truly great. Start saying, we're going to reap. We're in reaping season. Start declaring it. We're going to reap some old dreams. We're going to reap some old prayer meetings. We're going to reap some old times when we witnessed. Some old fasts that we went on are about to manifest with rewards and answers from God. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Just don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Fight one more day. Pray one more prayer meeting. Read one more chapter. Prophesy one more time. Fast one more meal. Some of you, I feel like some of you need to just grab that hand of yours and lay it on someone beside you and prophesy to them right now. Just tell them your season's coming. Whatever comes to your mind, just speak it. Your season's coming. Your season's coming. Answers are coming. Your prayers will be answered. Your kids will be saved. Your ministry is not dead. Speak it to somebody right now. Prophesy it to someone right now. Come on, Ezekiel. Let that mouth open. Talk to that graveyard. In a Somebody release that word to someone.
Somebody speak life to somebody. Speak life to somebody. Speak life to somebody. Seasons. Moed, appointed meetings, appointed time, appointed season, appointed, divine appointments, divine appointments, divine appointments, divine conversations, divine encounters, dreams from God are coming, dreams from God are coming, visions you can never conjure on your own. Let me give you this and we can go. Let me show you the power of holding on to your dream. Joseph dreamed 13 things bowed down to him. Sun, moon, 11 stars. It was 13 years when the dream manifested. He saw 13 things bowing down to him. It was actually 13 years of suffering. But at the end of the 13 years... When he went through Egypt, the Bible said everyone of Egypt bowed the knee. The dream only showed 13 things bowing down. But when the season manifested, it was far greater than the dream ever spoke. He endured the 13 years. But when his season manifested, the dream was only part of the reality of the thing that God had planned for him. What are you saying? If you're in the dungeon right now, if it's dark, if you're in doubt, just hang on. You're right underneath the palace. And one word from the king will make its way down to you, dreamer. And when you hear that word, you're going to burst forth out of that dungeon. And when you burst forth, the dream that you thought was everything will fail in comparison to what God actually had planned. Would you thank the Lord right now? Would you praise him with faith that something good is on its way? Something good is on its way.